Prophecy 22. Beloved, don't become your own worst enemy. Written and spoken under the anointing of the Ruach HaKodesh to Apostle Elizabeth Cherry Elijah, August 7th, 1998. From Prophecy 105, Yahweh said to put this up on all prophecies from now on. I warned you a long time ago, Elizabeth, not to name this ministry after a man or woman, even before there was a ministry. I put it in your spirit, for none of this has been done by your hand. None of this has come forth from your mouth. It is from the mouth of Yahweh that's given birth. It is from the mouth of Yahushua, your Mashiach, that's given birth. It is from the mouth of Ruach HaKodesh, your Imayah, that's given birth. If it had only been by your hand, it would have failed long ago. It is by the Shekinah glorious wind that blows across this earth, the holy wind of revival. It is not by your breath that would have failed. Prophecy begins. Prophecy number 22, Beloved, don't become your own worst enemy. All of us are sinners saved by grace and mercy. And if this were not so, why would we need a savior? It is the accuser of the brethren that accuses you and puts his guilt keep on you. I hear the Lord saying to you, My beloved, you have become your own worst enemy. Judging yourself is not your job, but your heavenly Father's job. Stop telling me what I have forgiven and what I cannot forgive. You repent in the past, yet those sins have been thrown in the sea of forgetfulness. My blood washed those sins away from you long ago. They are as far away as the east is from the west. As for your recent thoughts and transgressions, the greatest has been the beating you have given someone that I love far more than you can dare dream or understand. Someone I shed my blood for and gave my life for and would have if that someone would have only been one. Someone I was beaten beyond recognition for. That someone is you. Now stop trying to tell me I make a mistake when I chose you. Are you trying to tell me my business? Are you trying to tell me I make junk? Are you trying to tell me you know more than Almighty God, your Lord and Savior? Are you trying to tell me I make mistakes? Are you trying to tell me the blood isn't sufficient to wash you completely clean? Why would you take your own life when it's not yours to take? Why would you even try? Why would you even consider robbing me the joy of proving it's not the proud I chose to speak for me in this world? It's the humble. It's those that feel unworthy to make themselves worthy by knowing this. You know this. I am only reminding you of what you know. I choose not those filled with their own strength, but the weakest, for then the weak are made strong through Jesus Christ alone. You can do anything. I did not make a mistake when I chose you to speak in my name. I am Almighty God, and I don't make mistakes. How long must I say this to you? When will you listen to me? I chose you, and I knew what material, material you were made of, and yes, what transgressions would tempt you before you were even born. I knew what demons you would wrestle even before Satan sent them. I also know my grace is sufficient in all things. I also know, as Paul said, the harder you try and please me, the more Satan sends his demons to attack. But be on guard against all these attacks. Don't put yourself in a position to succumb to these attacks. Use the wisdom of the Lord I have given you. You know what I am speaking of. If not, ask me. For this prophet speaking to you has felt all of these things in different ways. All my true prophets, even in biblical times, felt unworthy. If they didn't, then I would deem them unusable. If you think you're sufficient without me, hear me, my beloved. Stop trying to kill what I have given life and life more abundantly. Stop receiving the spirit of insanity. Those that judge you in vain, understand not what I have spoken and shown you. For my purpose, I chose you. This is not a tug of war, my beloved. I will win. You will lose if you continue on doubting that which you know to be true. You have been warned because I love you. I have called you. And though there are those that think you're insane for believing I speak to you and show you these things that others don't see. The only thing insane about you is believing that I am punishing you for sins that I have been long forgotten and forgiven. Only Satan and you go fishing there, not your Savior. Stop trying to wash clothes that are already clean. Don't you think my blood is sufficient? You preach it. 
Now believe it. I have many more things to say to you, and I shall. But for now, digest for what I have spoken, for it is the truth. I have given you my armor to stand, my word to stand, my blood to cleanse, and my name and blood to heal, and chase the demons away that torment your mind, body, spirit, and soul. Now Satan fears this power, for I have given you the anointing to pray. Use it. Why aren't you believing what you're praying? Do you think I am deaf? Do you think my arms are too short to deliver you? Do you think my blood and name and word and armor is not sufficient? You, my darling, beloved, have angered me for not believing what I have spoken. Now you know these to be truths, so hold on tight and stop watching the waves and the troubled seas of your life, but this is why you're drowning in depression and sinful thoughts at times. Instead, keep your eyes on me, your Lord and Savior, Yeshua, Messiah, and come, let's walk on the water together. You're smart enough to know. I don't mean physically, but spiritually. Come, take my hand and believe and do not doubt. Leave your past behind you once and for all. Put your hand to the plow and labor in my harvest field, and don't look back. One last thing, you seek reassurance from some that you have sought, and how can they help you? For to remove the splinter from your eye, they must first remove the log in their own lives. In this world you shall have tribulation. Yes, but I have overcome this world. Now believe it. As I spoke these words to my handmaiden, Sherry, I say unto you now again, preach it, teach it, believe it. Need I say more? Stop surrounding yourself with Job's comforters. For like Job, they did not help him, only hindered him. They made him fight for the faith he believed in, made him defend his God. This is what's happening to you also. I give one more warning, and take it literally. If you die by your own hand, you will appear before an angry Jehovah. So stop trying to kill and destroy what I have left. You have been warned. Now stop being your worst enemy. For you have been doing Satan's job, and he sits back and laughs. Now it's your turn to laugh. Laugh again at Satan. Not in your strength, not in your power, not in your anointing or name, but in the name above all names, Yeshua, Messiah, Jesus Christ of Calvary and Nazareth, and Almighty God, Yahweh, who has the earth for a footstool, and a beloved son and daughter whom I treasure, both as my beloved sons and daughters, my warriors, my children and bride. I am coming again. Will you believe that again? Will you believe I'm a rewarder of those that have given their all for me? I have my rewards with me, and they have your name on them. Do you really choose me to give them to another? I have chosen you, but the time is so short. No more time for self-pity. Pity those that are not ready for my coming. Pity those that don't believe I will provide and save them from the great tribulation and great wrath that is to come. Pity those that think you are saved because of a religion and not a relationship with me. Self-pity is one of your greatest enemies. Rebuke it today in my name. Get back to feeding my sheep as I have commanded you to do. This day you have heard my voice. Now heed to it. Spoken this day to another prophet, Sherry, who has felt all of these things herself. But she knows faith is a fact and not a feeling. Both of you, all of you, get busy and feed my sheep. Prepare my bride. Help her to be without spot or wrinkle by proclaiming that which makes Satan shudder with fear. For the truth is, Yeshua, Messiah, Jesus Christ's name is victory, and I am coming again to prove it. Shout it from the internet. Shout it from the house up. Proclaim it in the streets, in the churches, radio and TV. Yeshua, Messiah, Jesus Christ is on the way. Gabriel has blown his trumpet. The sound waves have been blocked with the raging battle that is going on in the heavenlies now. Michael and Satan and the angelic host fight, good against evil, but good always triumphs. There are those that have heard the chauffeur horn, and those that have not. Yet I tell you, I have given the warning to those that have heard the horn, though Gabriel's horn has only been heard by a few thus far. It was only to prepare my bride, for her groom doth come. Do not be concerned that you have not heard the chauffeur horn of Gabriel yet, for it is yet for an appointed time. Even the sound waves can only be blocked for an appointed time. For now, am I not the one that knows how far heaven is from the earth? Even the calculations of this I have preordained. Quickly do what I have ordained and called you to do.